Let's look at another example. Um, so here we're trying to find the indefinite integral of a polynomial function, right? And remember that we, we kind of already worked out this, this power rule, right? So we had this power rule that said, if I want to do the indefinite integral of, of x to the n, as long as n is not equal to minus 1, then I have a log, I should do 1 over n plus 1 times x, x to the n plus 1. Plus, of course, constant of integration. So there are, there are a couple of ways that you can, you can tackle a problem like this, depending on uh, you know, what approach works better for you. Um, one is you just kind of sit there and break it down and think about it and realize, well, for one thing, when we take derivatives, we differentiate term by term, right? So when we're doing antiderivatives, the same, same should be true. So if we find antiderivatives for these three terms and add them together, that should be the antiderivative for the overall function. And we say 3x squared, is that the derivative of something? And we think about it, and we're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's the derivative of x cubed, right? We've seen that one before, right? It put n equal to 3, and it's here on the list, right? So we can go the other way. If you forgot that, you have this as a backup, right? Um, we add 1 to the exponent, we get 3. We divide by 3. 3 over 3 gives you 1. You end up with x cubed, OK? So you can do that for each term. You can just think about it and say, OK, um, what do I need to dif differentiate to get 4x? And you might remember that the derivative of x squared gives you 2x. And you say, OK, but I want 4x. Well, that's twice as much. So maybe I should do 2x squared, right? Because, again, we have the constant rule for derivatives. Um, so you can break it down like this. So you can just kind of think about it and work it out and write down your answer. Um, or if you want, you can formalize these ideas, right? So formally, we're saying, OK, well, you know, we can find antiderivatives of each term and then add them together, right? So just as the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, the antiderivative of a sum should be the sum of the antiderivatives. And so what some people will like to do is actually break it down. And write something like that. Uh, and, now, and now when you get to here, you might be a little bit concerned because you say, well, wait, wait, wait. Now, you know, when I do this one, I'm going to get a plus C. When I do this one, I'm going to get a plus C, but probably a different C, and again, for that one. Um, but, you know, adding three constants together still gives you a constant, right? So you can just put one plus C at the end, right? Um, we don't know what that constant is going to be, right? There's some arbitrary constant. All we're, all we're saying when we put that plus C on there is that, if we added a constant to our function, it wouldn't affect the derivative. That's all we're saying, right? OK. So we can do that. Uh, now, if you wanted to go one step further, we have a constant multiple rule for derivatives, right? We could even do this. We could say, oh, this is 3 times the antiderivative of x squared, right? Plus 4 times the antiderivative of x plus 5 times the indefinite integral of 5 is, you know, 5 times 1, right? Or if you want, just think of that as dx. And again, remember that you can think of, of this antiderivative as something which cancels the differential, right? So if there's nothing getting in the way, if there's no function in the way, antiderivative cancels with the d, leaves you with the x, OK? You can give it that way. Or you can just think of remembering that, oh, I remember that the derivative of x is 1, so the antiderivative of 1 must be x, OK? So now you can go through, and you can say, OK, um, using this rule, antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3, right? Then for x, x, that's x to the 1, right? 1 plus 1 gives me 2. There's that x squared over 2, right? And as we just said, antiderivative for 1 indefinite integral, if you like, is just x, right? And then we can just tack a single plus c on the end, right? The only thing left to do is, well, you can probably clean up those constants a little bit, right? So we have x cubed plus 2x squared plus 5x 
plus possibly some constant, and then we're done.